Sometimes it might be better to say nothing at all if you're questioned by the police. And in this video, I'm going to give you one very good reason why. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. So you may recall from various other videos that I've done that if you have a very simple explanation to something when the police come to question you, it might be better just to tell them there and then to get them off your doorstep and deal with it there and then. For example, if the police came to me and said, so we need to speak to you about an assault that happened in Manchester yesterday. I would obviously say, well, I wasn't in Manchester yesterday. I can prove where I was yesterday. In fact, I was right here. Everything that I have can prove that I was right here. I'll show you that now. Case is done and dusted because there's no way they can prove I was in Manchester yesterday because I wasn't in Manchester yesterday. So if in that case it is absolutely clear cut and that's all you say, that's fair enough. However, as I said, there are some situations where it is much better that you say nothing at all. Because if you are the kind of person that says something out of temper, out of frustration, out of confusion, desperation, panic, or any of these kind of things, you may say what I will call the wrong thing. And I'm going to explain what I mean by the wrong thing. So let's take this scenario for a moment where let's say someone's been assaulted, it's in a different city, and you know for an absolute concrete fact that it wasn't you. However, let's introduce another fact. Let's say you know that person. Let's say you don't like that person. Let's say you wouldn't be too upset if that person was assaulted. And let's say you might know someone that would assault that person. Let's go further and say you might know who was going to assault that person, but it's absolutely nothing to do with you. But then let's say the police are coming to question you about it for any one of a number of reasons that they might. Maybe just because you know the person. So let's stick with this principle first of all. You absolutely 100% did not do this. You were not there, you didn't assault them, you didn't tell anyone else to assault them, they didn't tell you they were going to assault them or anything of that nature whatsoever. But as I said, you wouldn't be upset if they did. But in this situation, you would, I'm sure, certainly not say to the police, yes, it was me. Unless, of course, you're trying to protect somebody else, in which case you shouldn't be doing that anyway, not least of which because it's perverting the course of justice, but you'll get yourself into trouble for something that you didn't do. But as I said, the likelihood is you are not going to say, yes, it was me. You are not going to confess that you did this thing, if actually you didn't. But something that you might say could go against you. Now, allow me to explain. A lot of the way that evidence is gathered and used and admitted in court, usually against you, is the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984. Now, Section 82 of PACE, as it's commonly known, is the interpretation for what is a confession. A confession being you admitting that you are guilty of a crime as charged or accused. Part 82 says, a confession includes any statement wholly or partly adverse to the person who made it, whether made to a person in authority or not and whether made in words or otherwise. So let's break this down very carefully. So it could be any statement at all, spoken, written, shouted, emailed, whatever it might be, any statement at all that is wholly or partly. Now, wholly is quite obvious. Wholly would be, yes, it was me, I did it. That is wholly adverse to your position. But partly adverse means you have some level of guilty mind about which you are being questioned. So if you were told that someone was beaten up and you made a statement such as, well, he deserved it or she deserved it, that is partly adverse to you as the maker of that statement. Why? Because it's obviously a negative thing. If this person has been assaulted and that's a crime and you find that positive and you make a statement to the effect that you find that positive, you say that they deserved it, you use perhaps the words such as karma and you say this might be karma, this is a statement which is at the very least partly adverse to you as the person who made that statement. And it doesn't matter whether it is made to a person in authority such as a police officer or to a friend of yours or whether it's made on Twitter or whether it's in words or otherwise. It could be used as a picture. You could be using a picture to express this feeling that you are pleased that someone else has received something such as 
karma, as you might put it, or some other kind of threat, intimidation, action, injury, theft from the person, whatever it might be. Any statement in words or otherwise, so it could be a picture, which is either wholly or partly adverse to the person that made it, whether to a person in authority or not. Then we come to section 76 of PACE, because section 76 provides that in any proceedings, a confession made by an accused person may be given in evidence against him insofar as it is relevant to any matter in issue in proceedings, and it is not excluded by the court pursuant to this section. Now, let's say that there's an argument about it being hearsay, but even if a matter is hearsay and is thus excluded, but some facts are discovered, something is uncovered, some truth is uncovered, regardless of the fact that this confession may be somehow excluded on the basis that it's hearsay. For example, if it's a picture or written words. Section 76, subsection 4 goes on to provide the fact that a confession is wholly or partly excluded in pursuance of this section shall not affect the admissibility in evidence of any facts discovered as a result of the confession or where the confession is relevant as showing that the accused speaks, writes or expresses himself in a particular way of so much of the confession as is necessary to show that he does so. So therefore any facts that are discovered or any investigation that is pursued as a result of a confession even if it becomes hearsay and therefore inadmissible, those facts that are revealed shall not be affected in terms of its admissibility. So winding all the way back, let's say the police knock on your door once again, but sticking with the same premise, you were definitely not there, you definitely didn't do it, you didn't tell anyone to do it, you didn't pay anyone to do it, it's nothing to do with you, but you do know the person, and you wouldn't be upset if that person were assaulted. If the police ask you about that, and you so much as laugh, or you say so much as, well, he deserved it, or she deserved it, or I'm glad, or it's about time somebody did, or it's their own fault, or it's because of X, Y, Z. Any one of a number of statements like that can amount to a confession and can be used against you. So in the event that you ultimately become charged as even being involved, even being a conspirator, even being the person that is accused of telling someone else or encouraging someone else to go and hurt them, this can come down to be a confession against you and unless it's excluded, and even to the extent that I've explained with section 76 of PACE, some evidence may not be excluded, it can be used against you as a confession. And confessions can be very powerful. So whilst some situations, it can be the best thing to just tell the police, this, look, this is nothing to do with me. I have no knowledge of it whatsoever. I was here. Please don't question me any further unless you have some real evidence that I have anything to do with it, because I didn't. But sometimes, even so much as hinting at the wrong thing can amount to a confession. So please heed this as some sort of guidance and like the video if you find this useful. Remember to subscribe and thank you for watching.